that crazy day. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. This is episode number 445. And the topic today is what inspires you about relationship or what inspires you in relationship? What inspires you for relationship? It's all three. I'll give them those in a minute. Before I start with that, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 445. Yeah, there's a lot of these out there. And the topic today, because it literally came to me in a moment, even though running a bit late, saying, let's do this today. Um, what inspires you about, for, and in relationship? So I'm going to speak to you if you're in a relationship or if you're single, and hopefully give you some insight, inspiration, and guidance about what might be next for you. So let's jump in, shall we? Um, if you, haven't, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this on Facebook Live and then they go onto YouTube and I, iTunes and I'll tell you about those afterwards. Also, this talk is, um, I can say this, unscripted. <laughs> it is absolutely um, live, un, like unrehearsed, unplanned, and I'm going to jump into it. So bear in mind this is going to be an interesting one. Actually, let me preface by saying it's been a very weird day. Um, in one area, there's some issues going along, uh, going uh, going on about some stuff I'm working on with some friends. That there's some deadlines that got that are getting screwed, getting messed up with. So that's one thing that's on the plate. But the bigger thing in terms of right in front of me, and it's just because I'm still smelling the the uh, um, chlorine, is um, discovering a dead wild animal in the backyard today that had to get animal control to come clean up made a very, very very strange day. So it's been a very weird experience today and there's still more to do with it, but it's just strange to say the least. So with that, I can put the news away and get onto the topic today because those that's been a weird day. So getting onto the topic at hand, what inspires you about relationship? Now, I want to say this in three words again, about, for, and in relationship because they mean different things. They mean different things to different people. And first of all, <laughs> first of all, I would hope and like to think that you actually do get inspired about relationship, whether you're in one or not. I like to think that if you're looking for a relationship, you're doing it out of a place of joy and possibility versus um, I, need to feel, I need it just to feel comfortable. Because there are some people that look for a relationship as a place to hide out and a place to feel comfortable versus a place to grow and explore and become more of who they are. And if you watch my broadcast, you know that I'm kind of a, um, I'm biased towards relationships that expand and grow you versus ones where you just get to just chill out and be the same, which is to me boring. But that's me of course. It may be you too, but it's certainly me. So when I mean inspiration, meaning what is it that excites you, uplifts you, um, makes you happy, brings you joy about relationship. If you're single, do you have those sort of qualities on your list of what you want? I talked about this yesterday about list building, or list not list building, but the um, minimum maximum size of lists for creating a relationship I talked about that yesterday so that that's the broadcast you watch I'm not going to repeat that now but you can watch that again if you want to that was yesterday's number 444 today though I want to speak more about the flavor or the um, the way that you can actually have a relationship that works so again if you want a relationship that's going to be comfortable and boring you probably don't want to watch this broadcast but if you're looking for a relationship that's going to blow your socks off and ideally you do in in a, in a maybe in a metaphorical sense, then keep stay tuned. So inspiration in relationship, I mean this from the point of view of, did, one, if you're not in a relationship, what do, you, what do you look forward to in a relationship? What do you look to inspire you and uplift you and inform you and make you feel great in a relationship? One. Second thing is if you're in a relationship, what is it you do or how do you feel? What is it you bring that makes that inspiring for you? If you're in a relationship where that's not happening, what would you like to do? to raise the vibration, to inspire and uplift the relationship. Now, inspiration is a, um, I can say this, spiritual term? No, it's not what I use. Basically, the, the root of the word inspire is, or as far as I remember, that from the Latin is spirit within, as in in spirit, inspire. So in a way, this could be speaking about um, spiritual relationship, 
but I'm really talking about romantic relationship and whether or not you have a spiritual flavor to it or a religious flavor to it or a agnostic or atheist version of it, it's about what inspires your joy, your light, your flame, your flame, your fire for an amazing relationship. Again, if you're single or in a relationship, this question can appeal to you like if you're planning ahead or if you're in one, what is it that brings you up? Now, you'll free, feel, feel free, try it again, feel free to put in some comments on the screen if you have already got ideas of what you believe about relationship that is, is gonna be amazing, what uplifts, what inspires you, what thrills you about relationship, because um, I'm sure I'm open to adding more content to the conversation. But I wanted to, if nothing else, to provoke you to think, yes, I do that a lot in my conversations, to invite you to look at your own choices and to really get clear about what it is you want in a relationship if you're not in one, and what is it you don't have in a relationship if you're in one. Yes, I'm gonna go there as well. Because truly, when relationships go flat, and I, I did do a talk about this before about chemistry, I talked about this a couple of days ago, and this is kind of on a similar vein, so I'm gonna speak from a different angle. The question was, in that broadcast, about what happens when the chemistry wears off. So the thing about it is, a lot of times the inspiration of what drew you into the relationship in the first place doesn't last, doesn't sustain you, doesn't continue. And so you may find yourself at the end of um, a period of time in your relationship, or, or at the end of a past relationship, if you want to use re historical review, where you look at the relationship and go, what was I in there for the first place? Why was I there? Sorry, why was it there in the first place? What was it about the relationship that kept me there? Because maybe you were inspired at the beginning, and maybe by the end you had nothing left. So my question then becomes, yes, I have questions galore. My question then becomes, what is in you that changed? And this is the thing about relationships that could be a whole other conversation here, is that a relationship 99% of the time is a reflection of you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is the thing that is one of those big best kept secrets. The relationship really is based upon what you bring to it as much as what you get from it. And I'm realizing I'm actually conflating about four different talks I've done about this stuff because it really is something where people don't think about it. When a relationship ends, a lot of times what they're feeling is it's the other person. It's the things they didn't do or the way they didn't behave or did behave that didn't work. And so you left because of whatever it was. Well, the question then becomes, what is it inside of you that maybe died? Yes, died, or at least went to sleep. That inspiration, that fuel, that, in, that fire that brought you in the relationship in the first place. Now I talked about, um, again, chemistry a few days ago, about the chemistry relationships, how that can become something that is extremely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That explains your flaky township relationship? Township? Gina, feel free to explain and expand. <laughs> um, bring that thought back, talking about, yes, okay. so not township, then what is it you said? That's the word you typed. <laughs> Maybe you can explain, well, I know, that I have to remember that, that the, what I'm responding to is a comment you posted 30 seconds ago, and I won't see your response to what I asked until 30 seconds hence. So I can remember it's like it's a one minute circle for communication. So relationship, yes, yeah, so you said, oh, your flaky relationship. Well, that's the thing. Um, I can say this, <laughs> I gotta be nice. Um, a large part of this is the choices we make. So you could blame your partner for being whatever that is, if it's not flaky, if it's flaky, whatever it is. But the reality is, is that we chose partnership with that person. So we have an opportunity, not have to, but an opportunity to take responsibility for our choices because it's not our job to fix that person. It's our job to fix ourselves. And it's our participation in the relationship that really is where the work is. And if you're with somebody that is, in that term, flaky or unreliable or they cheat on you or, they go, or they're basically lazy and good for nothing once you're in a relationship, did you have indications, signposts, clues when you first met them that you ignored? And this is now a whole other topic I'm realizing. Hmm, okay. We, as people, are way, more, way smarter than we think and we're way more intuitive than we let on. Because you're, because you're a flake or ambiguous? Maybe. I'm not saying a projection directly that way. What I'm speaking about, though, is were there signs at the beginning that you may have seen but chose to ignore? Because this is the thing I've done myself. I know I've done it before in a relationship. And many, uh, let me say this, everybody, I would say, and I'm being global about this, has at some point in time 
ignored signposts and went into a relationship anyway and then paid the price later. All right. Most people, I mean, not everybody, some people did it perfect the first time out. I didn't. <laughs> Let's just say that, and a lot of people watching, I'm sure, I haven't either. Is that we have this challenge of, um, well, it's that rose tinted spectacle viewpoint of seeing the best and ignoring the worst and jumping in anyway, hoping that it will go away. But the truth is, those patterns don't go away, they'll just be more well hidden. And at some point in time, at some point in time, they will surface. And the best thing you can do from the most positive place is recognize that you ignored it at the beginning and now you get to decide what you want to do with it. Because as we are, um, well, I like to say spiritual beings have a human experience and then the growth path, growth path all the way through. When we jump into a relationship, we've got a bad habit, we do, of ignoring certain red flags. Sometimes it's subtle, sometimes they're blatant, but we get into this place where what we are doing is hoping for the best and not planning for the worst. As so we get into a relationship on, I can say, um, it's like, I mean, I'm looking for analogies, so this is, this is what came up for me. A piano, yes. <laughs> I've got a piano that came up my analogy. So imagine that basically you have a piano with 88 keys and 20 of them are in tune. And you're focused on the 20 that are in tune, knowing that there's 68 that aren't in tune. So you don't touch those. But I guarantee you within a few months of that relationship, those other 68 keys are going to come into play. And they're going to sound out of tune, but you've been ignoring them since the beginning. If you aren't willing to admit that you made the choice anyway, that's a mistaken approach, by the way. You've got to be willing to take responsibility for your role. And this is the big part of relationships, is that a lot of people don't. They blame the other person, they play victim, and they judge the other person as being the person that caused their pain and hurt and suffering. Not so fast, kid. A lot of what happens is because we open ourselves up and put ourselves in a position where we don't take responsibility for our role in that relationship. The best path to follow in any relationship, be it personal, romantic, family, social, business, any of those relationships, is to really be clear about our own participation in that relationship. What did we bring? What did we ignore? What did we not do? And also, what did we do knowing even consciously that what we're going to do is going to upset the other person. Like we're going to trigger them or upset them or cause some sort of aggravation. We're going to make a, um, we're going to, um, what's the word looking for? We're going to, uh, what's the word? Exacerbate, that's probably a good word. Exacerbate what was already there. For example, again, using the piano analogy that for some reason it seems to be working, that we have those 20 keys that are in tune and we know full well that the other ones are not in tune and we will mess with them because we want to stir up trouble. Because a part of us likes to do that. It's one of those really weird things that we have in our psyche. So, I guess I'm realizing I flipped the conversation. I started with about what inspires you, now I'm talking about what doesn't. Say la vie, it's the way it goes. So, the recognition and the reminder I keep bringing to the table is, what is our role of responsibility in relationship? Not to say we put up with it, but the choice about whether we stay or go, and more importantly, do we learn or not learn from what happened? Because it's fine to quit a relationship that's not healthy and doesn't work for you. As long as you do learn the lesson from it. Because so many people out there, and I include myself in this one, will choose that another relationship again with a different person, the same thing shows up because we didn't learn the first time. And I know if you're watching this, you've been through that yourself too. Because we have this bad habit of not learning the lessons that we're given. And those lessons that we're given, I spoke about this a couple of days ago too, is that we learned a form of conditioned loving from the way we were raised. I'm bringing everything together today. Apparently it's like, I'm raising, I'm, I'm touching on seven, five, six, seven different broadcasts I did last week. Okay, so la vie, um, or so be it. So I mentioned before, again, this is Cliff Notes versions, that we are um, conditioned in the way we were raised about love. We learn about loving as a kid, and we're conditioned by the experience of what we have about it to presume love works a certain way. And that's the way it is, period. As an adult, we don't know what's going on, but subconsciously we're running those conditions. So if we don't realize in the relationship we're in, those conditions are playing out, they're going to happen again in the next relationship. doesn't matter who we date. We're going to keep attracting the same experiences again and again and again. Here's the thing. At some point in time, you're going to go, this feels familiar, or this looks the same, or this sounds the same, or this feels the same you'll be aware that this is not the first time this has happened to you. This is a um, hallelujah moment. 
because this is when you become aware of your patterns that you didn't know you were running for the last 10, 20, 30 years, and then go, hang on a second, I see something's up. And when you do get awareness and go, now know what's up, you have a choice. You can sublimate it, uh, sublimate it again and ignore it, which people do, because the next person's gonna be a great. Or you can say, you know what, I need to do some work. I need to go find some help, I need to get some coaching, I need to get some counseling, some therapy, something, to change the, those conditions so I don't do it again. Because truthfully, it's not an easy thing to fix on your own. I know from my own experience of having to go through different um, programs and paths and, and guidance to get to the point where now I know those patterns won't run, run rampant over me again. Which they will, they run rampant. Because they're automatic. They're not controlled, they're not, they're not um, governed. They are able to run amok without you contr your control because they're subconscious. That's the joy, the bliss, and the pain of this stuff. So, let me try and bring it back to inspiration because I started with that. So what inspires me about people being in a relationship is it's a chance to become better than they were when they started. Yes, I believe relationships make you better or give the opportunity for you to make yourself better. Of course, the thing about it is, this is the part of it I don't talk about, is how it's also true when you're single. The reality is that you can improve yourself when you're in a relationship and when you're single. You can do both. And that is a part, this is, this is the opportunity and the imitation about life itself is that life can be, and I believe this firmly, life can be a path of learning, of growth, and evolution that makes you a better person and more inspired every single day. And then when you're in a relationship, you can accelerate that process if you choose. That may have been the traditional way to look at relationships, you know, like to, uh, for a happier, for richer, for poor, happier, happier, and happier and sad, and to that first part, all that stuff. I'm talking about take on a relationship as a path to growth, to become more of who you are and to become a better person. Do that when you're single as well, of course. So that is what I say inspires me about relationships, which is why I'm a relationship attraction expert. I get inspired by this. So if this resonates for you and you want help, um, I do offer a discovery session, as my, discovery session as my gift, which is basically a chance for us to talk for 30 minutes and you can basically get on my calendar, fill out the form, and basically ask your questions, get some clarity, and I'll give you some guidance. And in 30 minutes, yes, I can work that fast. I won't fix everything, but I'll give you guidance in the end of 30 minutes. And some of them may be offering to work with me. That is part of the invitation. And you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat to get that. Or if you go to my website, barryselby.com, and click on Let's Chat it's on the left-hand side of the menu. You can sign up for that. Um, if you're someone who's really clear that part of your journey is to learn how to love yourself more, I have a special project, project, special project, a special practice for you. I actually created this last week, week before, after many months of being invited by clients to do this, it's a soft love mirror meditation practice. It's basically a written guide and audio um, meditation tracks that you can download from my website. And you can basically get some guidance about how to really love yourself more than you ever have before. It is mirror work, which is some of the deepest work in that's so simple. It's not always easy, but my guidance and my, pr my practice will help you with that, make it much easier for you. So you go to barryselby.com, again, and click on the soft love practice in the menu or go to barryselby.com forward slash self love or one word that will take you right to that page um, this again I mentioned is number 445 in an ongoing series of talks um, on Facebook live they go onto my business page on Facebook and that's barryselby.author where you find all my replays as well as onto my YouTube channel which is Barry Selby's the channel a message for the masculine is the playlist and then also onto um, well now my podcast I need to go back and update that by the way I have a podcast on iTunes called Messages of the Masculine. I'm slowly adding more broadcasts to that, the audio versions of these broadcasts. And you can listen to them all at once. You can listen to them when you're driving, when you're cycling, when you're exercising, when you don't have to look at the phone, because you know you want to see the world around you, especially if you're driving. So you can go to iTunes, subscribe there, and download all of those. And, uh, and that's it. I'll be back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, my usual time. And I hope this has been an inspiration to you. And hopefully some of this stuff was kind of like, oh, yes, I can work on that. It may be in a no-crap moment as well as a no-joy moment. So hopefully one of those will work for you. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow for another broadcast from Messages of the Masculine. And uh, something new and different. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.